come to order. Today is February 16th. Let the record show it's uh, eight minutes after three. Today, members, we're going to do an overview on Governor's Department of uh, Agricultural Supplemental Budget and the bonding request. And we have Commissioner Peterson with us today to present that information. Commissioner Peterson, are you ready to go? Mr. Chairman, I am ready to go. Well, thank you, Commissioner Peterson, and welcome to the committee and provide okay. your presentation. All right, let's see you get it loaded up there and uh, hopefully somebody else is doing that. And I know Joel is super tech savvy, so. so. Joel is working on it right now. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, for the record, a quorum is present. This will be much better with slides, so yeah, that's a. Uh, How the ponies doing? They're uh, they're cold. Let's say uh, thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Ready to get some warm weather for them. So. Yep. All right. I see it kind of coming up there. I can go ahead and just start. Then you know, uh, we can let Joel catch up, kind of. If that works, because I got a lot of, lot of, there we go, look at that. So a lot of slides to get through here. I'm going to talk fast. And well, Commissioner, would you like, if there's questions, would you like to have them ask as we go, or would you like to wait till the end? Mr. Chairman, either way. Okay, so members, if you have questions, please feel free to ask them as we go. I could always use a break from talking because there's a lot of slides. So I'm going to, I'm going to go kind of fast too. And, you know, I think the things I really want to get on, but I'm glad to talk uh, about these anytime. So we just want to, uh, first is just a reminder of what our mission is. Uh, you can read it there, hopefully. Um, you know, protecting the food supply, uh, the health of our environment, strength, resilience of our uh, economy. Uh, yeah, you can go to the next slide, Joel. Uh, just a quick update since the last, uh, uh, for, for the record too, my name is Tom Peterson, uh, Commissioner of Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Uh, the next slide, we just wanted to provide a quick update since the last 2021 session. Really appreciate the strong budget that uh, passed by uh, passed unanimously off the Senate floor and was signed by the governor, and uh, it prevented uh, uh, an increase in dollars for the bio incentive payments. Uh, we put six million dollars into the uh, biofuels infrastructure grants, also matched by a million dollars from the corn growers. Th that RFP just went out uh, a couple weeks ago. We're seeing really strong uh, work on that. Um, the meat uh, and Livestock processing grants, uh, we uh, hit that and um, really uh, just awarding those right now. Quite a few of those uh, dollars going to meat lockers across the state. We also put some dollars into halal processing. Uh, farm safety grants, those are open right now. That was part of uh, that uh, work uh, Senator Friends, Senator Dreheim have worked on for a long time. Our uh, farm link, uh, we're updating the, uh, our website. Uh, and we we're working on kicking off our farmland access teams project and we are emerging farmers office We were able to hire a coordinator who's doing an excellent job. So uh, next slide, please. I Wanted to jump right into our first ask uh, in the uh, Governor's uh, budget and first let me just lay out the governor's budget by saying um, We really wanted a strong agricultural package. We looked at uh, going through COVID uh, we looked at what other states were doing, and we saw some strong agricultural packages around the country. Uh, we saw Wisconsin, 60-some million uh, in direct payments to farmers, uh, and we saw Washington State, uh, Colorado, uh, North Dakota doing various amounts of payments to farmers, to uh, ag organizations, to support uh, different things. So what we wanted to do uh, as we looked at the surplus that we have within the state what are some things that we could do and propose that would help uh, our food system, help secure our food system as we move forward? The first thing we had to look at, though, was our drought from last year. Uh, as you know, uh, or the committee knows, if we went back to late August, 80% of the state was in an extreme uh, drought, uh, or a, a severe drought across the state. 50% of the state was in an extreme drought and 10%, mostly up in Senator Johnson's district, was in an exceptional drought, Senator Eakin's district. 
uh, just really a painful drought. Luckily, we got timely rains uh, and our, our finished off our corn crop, soybean crop uh, did help a lot. The problem was our farmers throughout the state lost two, uh, two three cuttings of hay. They had to feed the hay that they kept uh, for this winter and fall. Uh, and that's posing a problem right now as I continue to get pro uh, questions and uh, what we're doing for drought relief from farmers who are short on hay. They have to make that decision whether or not to sell cattle right now. Our hay stocks right now are 35% below what they were last year. And a year ago today, uh, we had 30%. Our hay, our hay supply was the third lowest it had been since 1950. So I go to the auctions on Thursday by my house. I watch the prices. I talk to the farmers. We feel like the drought relief is something that is needed. Uh, so we proposed a package, two prong. One is to boost our RFA, uh, which <clears throat> uh, in the RFA, our Rural Finance Authority, kind of our bank at the department, we have a, a revolving loan uh, fund, and this would put $5 million into that to kind of boost it up because we are seeing tremendous interest in that. The first 10 loans that we've done through a COVID disaster loan has taken $1.2 million out of that balance that we had, and so it would help to uh, secure some funding in that going forward. Keep in mind that that investment now um, would be there forever because it would continue to roll over as it's paid back, and so I think that's an important piece. Next slide, please. The next piece is uh, rapid response grants. These would be uh, grant awards of, uh, it says five to 10,000 uh, with legislative authority. Um, we, I, I think the bill that we've been working on that is uh, being introduced today would be 10, up to 10,000. Uh, again, this is something we put forward. These could all be scalable. You can go 2 million, 3 million, 2,000, 5,000, whatever you wanted. We picked these numbers after visiting with farmers. Um, we would get these out to livestock and specialty crop growers. Um, I would say commodity crop growers, corn, soybean, wheat, they do have crop insurance, doesn't make them whole, but it's a, it's a better safety net than is available for these other farmers. And so this is what we ended up with. The one thing I want the committee to know though, is if we're gonna do these grants, we need to do them sooner than later because it takes us time to put together an RFP to uh, get the notice out to the farmers for the farmers to apply and get them back. So say we do this in the next couple of weeks, we get done by March 1st, we're looking at maybe April 1st before we can write checks. If this is an end of session type of situation where we're doing it May 20th, 3rd or whatever we're adjourning uh, and passing at the last minute, we're not gonna be writing checks to July or August. I'm not sure it's worth doing. So that's my main point on that. Next slide, please. Uh, before we leave yes. that, uh, uh, Commissioner, just a couple of questions. Do you know, did the governor ever consider using a tax credit program to provide leaf relief for the drought versus uh, the type of program that you're talking about now? Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, yes, uh, I did uh, consider, I did visit with the Revenue Commissioner, Senator Westrom uh, brought that up with me, um, and uh, we did visit with about it, and uh, it, you know, and I can't speak for the Department of Revenue, but it seemed more complicated than this, and we felt like this was an easier way to target to those uh, farmers and so it, that it is another way to do it. Um, again, this proposal is something that I worked on with uh, farm groups, with farmers. This is kind of the idea that I put together after hearing from them, which would be helpful in this situation. So it was something we considered and could consider still. Again, this is the idea that we put forward and worked on. Mm -hmm. A, a follow-up question, it's actually a little different vein, but uh, on these loans, uh, I know there's some concern about the length of time it's taking to get these loans processed. And it appears that originally these loans were being moved out in that six to 10 day type period. And now we're squeezing into that 50 to 60 day period. Is there something that's being done to, to change that? It's, it's, uh, cause there'd be a concern if I was a banker, there would be a concern there about the amount of time it's taking or if somebody from the, 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 the credit loan associations and stuff, the length of time it's taking to do those loans and the time that they have tied up in trying to process those. Is there something that's being done to address that? 
Mr. Chairman, thank you for asking. And uh, this is a, a really big issue uh, with our Rural Finance Authority that's really been developing over the last uh, couple of years. And we've been trying to address in different ways. Uh, last year and including this year, um, we've been looking at doing it through the tax bill. Uh, and uh, you have to look at our, the Rural Finance Authority uh, does all kinds of different loans. Uh, and I. Uh, my notes in front of me at the moment, but I, in general, I can tell you uh, five years ago, um, we're probably doing three to four times the amount of loans we were doing then, and that's a good thing. Our beginning farmer loan is one of the best loans you can get, but we are uh, uh, taking some time to get those done because of the volume. So we've tried to find money to bring on a retired staff person to try to help uh, with that pressure. That what happened also, so our loan volume has increased in the last three years, and um, you know, and, and we've been working to address that and look at other ways. But one other thing that the RFA took on was the beginning farmer credit, uh, Senator Goggins' uh, bill that uh, he passed, which is a very successful bill. Uh, we've get uh, four or five hundred farmers and asset owners a year applying for that. But that's 1,100 transactions uh, that the RFA is also doing a year that we've added on to the workload. And so we had a bill last year um, that was supported by members of this committee bipartisanly that was attached to the tax bill that would allow us to use some of the appropriation in the tax bill or the revenue department for the beginning farmer credit to give us some relief uh, in the RFA. And so that was one way that we tried to attach that um, and put that forward. And so there are uh, different ways we, and we're continue with that this year um, because we have to address that uh, with the beginning credit being as successful as it is. So there's different ways we're trying to attach that and look at it, but it is a, a situation um, as we move forward. Yeah, I, I thank you, Commissioner. I think anything that you could do there to kind of shorten that time period would certainly be appreciated, but uh, Go ahead with the rest of your presentation. Okay, thank you. And uh, again, the next slide, I'll go through these kind of quick. This is a three million, uh, next slide, a three million one time, uh, a three million appropriation uh, to the, um, within agri, or outside of the program, outside of agri, I should just lead, read the slide, uh, to provide grants for the uh, meat, uh, poultry, and uh, milk processors. Uh, again, these would be uh, uh, grants um, you know, to help uh, build out that meat and livestock processing that we saw. I mentioned the grants we just did. I think we did 700,000 and we had almost $3 million uh, in uh, locker plants and things around the state that we were not able to fulfill. So we know the need is there, some great applications. Again, farmers are waiting up to a year uh, that want a local process at uh, a small town uh, locker plant. And we want to try to get out of it. That's one thing that COVID has kind of brought to light. It was an issue before COVID, but people are buying, uh, you know, a half a steer, a, a whole pig, uh, different opportunities. People are buying cuts from a meat market. Uh, there's great opportunities there. So that's a, a piece of that. You can go to the next slide too, because these all kind of go together. This is a $3 million proposal that goes along with it. Because when we had these grants before, and we had CARES dollars in 2020, a lot of the plants would tell us they'd love to do this, but they don't have um, enough dollars. Uh, to, they, keep, they don't have any workers. And so this is a proposal we would do to work with uh, local and regional economic development agencies to work directly with meat processors uh, to get sign-on bonuses, uh, relocation allocators, just help them get employees and keep employees at these smaller plants so they can expand and grow. Because everywhere I go, uh, even in this last round, they'd say, I'd, I'd apply, but I, I can't get a worker to help me. So it's an interesting idea and a different proposal uh, as we go forward. Uh, next slide, please, because this kind of goes along with it. This is also uh, grants. Uh, if you remember, last year the legislature also passed appropriation to Central Lakes College. Uh, to help uh, grow and they're starting their meat cutting classes. This would help uh, with equipment and infrastructure for those uh, colleges as uh, they're building out those classes. So you can see their uh, different things or costs that they'll have with that as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, one of the things, this also is a piece of this too, is uh, it just goes along that would help our lab 
uh, match federal funds for uh, analyzing samples. This is another thing that would also help uh, in backlogs and timing for our uh, testing programs with uh, the lockers that we're working with. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Five million in hunger relief. Uh, this is something to you that the committee has funded uh, through different, um, our general fund appropriations. We've done through CARES, we've done other things. There's uh, hunger needs that were exposed during COVID, uh, and this would work with uh, Second Harvest and the food group to purchase additional dairy and meat products uh, and uh, get those out to folks and would require a portion of these purchases to be made by Minnesota producers or from Minnesota producers. Next slide. Um, one of the things I also just want to say about this budget process we did is we opened this uh, late summer, early fall, as we opened a portal and asked for uh, ideas to come in that are transformational or something different. Uh, and uh, a, a lot of these ideas, most of these ideas came in from organizations across the state uh, and uh, we put them into uh, words and dollars. So the next one is uh, uh, 1.5 million to support the Good Acre Leaf Program. Uh, the LEAF program is, open, is only open to farmers who identify as um, uh, BIPOC, including Hmong or other Southeast Asian, whose gross farm sales are less than 100,000, whose farm income is 25% of their household income. In the spring of 2020, the Good Acre and several partner organizations uh, foresaw two challenges in their community uh, that were addressed, a loss of income for farmers and increased hunger due to job loss. And so this is a, a program that was very successful and would help build uh, and work with some of our, our farmers uh, uh, through um, uh, helping them with food safety, packing standards, and wholesale style delivery. So uh, kind of a different idea, but I think it's a really uh, been successful for them and we would just build up on that. Next slide. The next slide would build on something too that we also have in our legislature is building off of e-commerce or e-markets. Uh, during uh, the meat processing and uh, things in 2020 and everything that we went through, we saw more and more farmers uh, starting to direct market. And this uh, grant is one that we've had and we'd like to boost this. Um, it really helps farmers who are uh, having to deal with uh, uh, food safety plans, uh, websites, all these different things. I, I'd say this grant is really interesting because if I get feedback from farmers who've got a grant and they'll say this has been transformational to their business, having help with their website, having dollars to uh, help set up these different uh, platforms and uh, help with registrations and licenses, uh, it's been a, a very successful uh, piece. Uh, next slide is uh, $1 million uh, to local food systems and local governments to help with uh, 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 food system planning grants. Again, with COVID, uh, examples of planning activities to amendments would be comprehensive plans, economic development plans, strategic plans, uh, focused on helping communities take advantage of local and regional food and agricultural resources to revitalize their economies. One of the things I think in here, some of the senators have heard about commercial kitchens or group kitchens. Uh, this would help fund some of those uh, plans that uh, communities are doing to uh, help um, uh, grow and foster businesses. Uh, next slide is also uh, 1.5 million, and this would be uh, working with grocery stores. We did a similar grant with uh, CARES dollars that we got in 2020. Um, that help build capacity, do uh, direct uh, uh, grants to grocery stores, small town, or just grocery stores in general for infrastructure improvement, technical assistance. Next slide. Uh, $2 million service to immigrant and BIPOC producers and businesses. This uh, uh, funds would be granted to support organizations such as Among American Farm Association, the Latino Economic Development Council, and the Metropolitan Economic uh, Development Council, as well as regional organizations such as initiative foundations who can provide technical assistance, including farm and food business navigators, which would be helping people find land, uh, rent land, uh, buy land, uh, and to help with translation services for non-English speaking producers and businesses. We're just seeing a real boom in um, uh, people wanting to get out there and farm, and uh, this would be extremely helpful 
and again, was something that came in through our portal, we think is, is one of the top things I hear and uh, see as something that could be very helpful. And really helping through process uh, applications or things that we have available through the department. Uh, and um, let's see, okay, next, next slide, please. Uh, farmers Market, $1.5 million is just a pass through to Farmers Market Association uh, to grants for uh, deliveries of uh, 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 technical assistance and projects that each market may do. Um, this is something other states we've seen do. Uh, farmers Markets within the pandemic have really grown. Uh, it was one of the first things people could do outside. They could, uh, um, farmers markets uh, grew in many areas for this, and so there's other things that we think would help them continue to grow and move, uh, whether it's uh, purchases of hand washing stations, uh, uh, permanent signage, yardage, storage sheds, small trailers, equipment, uh, and uh, things such as that. Uh, next piece. Two million dollars, I think of this too, as we're looking at one-time investments for the state, if we have a surplus uh, and things we want to take care of is IT modernization. It lays the foundation for a new initiative designed in MDA to ensure that we have the information, technology, infrastructure necessary to accomplish our strategic goals and priorities. The proposal covers the initial stages of efforts to needed to plan, choose, and acquire, implement new customer entity uh, management technology system and MDA. So basically helping our applications and computers better online and more easy uh, just to put it, to cut to the chase on that one. Next one, $500,000 uh, for co-packing uh, grants. Establishes a new competitive grant designed to support manufacturers who co-pack or manage commercial kitchens and other supply chains. This kind of goes along with one earlier. Um, people who um, work together, uh, support small uh, brands, uh, retailers, um, they, these community kitchens and restaurants, uh, these uh, are, are something that we've heard more and more about and uh, would be very helpful as we continue to grow um, uh, that level of our food system. Uh, next slide is one that you've spent a lot of time on in the committee here. The last couple of days, we have $1.5 million to address uh, African swine fever. I don't think we have to spend a lot of time on this. You'd wear that since the committee left, uh, met the last time, you know, African swine fever is in uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti. Uh, you know, um, just a very serious situation uh, that, um, you know, we have to be prepared. We have to have the uh, tools that we need uh, we have a wonderful um, uh, uh, team uh, with everybody working, and of course the high path avian influenza continues to spread and looks uh, uh, to be very serious and as we monitor the fly patterns and everything else going on. So I think as you know what what keeps me up at night is uh, those uh, things and the economic impact that they can have. The next one, I will just, we could spend all day on this or a whole hearing. Up, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. now, on this 1.5 million that you're speaking about here, is that funding for the veterina veterans or the veterinarian diagnostic lab or is that, yeah, is that what that's for? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, it's not included in this as yet, um, but it could be, you know, it's something that I uh, have been working on with, uh, we put it in as a placeholder with things that we have. Uh, preparedness work, uh, let's see, uh, um, we, we would use these to leverage outside grant opportunities that are needed to invest in new like trained personnel, equipment, facilities, uh, exercises, and build uh, relationships. We do a lot of trainings, things like that. But I wanted this in our budget, and you know we've been working with the university, and I'm really open to whatever package the, the committee ends up with. Um, if uh, the VDL and making sure the board and, and we have the tools, um, totally open to that. So uh, it doesn't necessarily in the wording that you'll see in our bill as it gets introduced, but we're working on that, if that is comforting. Thank you, Commissioner, and go, go ahead. Okay, the next one we could spend uh, several committee hearings on. Um, I will just tell you that it's in the bill, and uh, this is a grain indemnity fund uh, that we're proposing to establish with uh, an influx of cash uh, as the committee has uh, debated and we've talked about before over the years, we have had uh, several uh, failures in the last few years. 
We had the uh, failure in Senator Johnson's district and Carlstad's, the chairman's district and Ashby, um, uh, Senator Gazelka's district in uh, uh, Wadena. And then this past year, we had a large failure of Pipeline Foods, the largest organic grain handling company. And I think the, the, the bottom line is the system that we use in our state um, just does not provide enough coverage. We use a bonding uh, uh, system. Most states around us have an indemnity fund, including uh, North Dakota. And I think it's time that our state uh, takes a serious look at this because as we get into the pipeline uh, claims and others, uh, farmers are gonna look to get 10 cents on the dollar for uh, that's the protection our state offers. And so I think it's uh, time that we have that discussion and look forward to the consideration. And again, if we wanna go into the details on this, uh, we could, but it's a very uh, long and complicated uh, uh, piece. Um, but uh, uh, glad to take your questions. But. Mr. Chair, thank you. Senator Prince. Thank you, uh, thanks Commissioner. I know you don't want to get into too many details, but I can't help notice uh, fees associated with sales of grain. Could you tell us a little more about exactly how that's going to work and kind of what you see? Thank Commissioner. You. Yep, and, and uh, uh, Senator, I think we have a Nick Milanowski who's with our grain division, and if I could have Nick maybe take a chance at uh, explaining that, uh, might be better than me and, and save us some time. So he should be yeah. on. Thanks, Commissioner Peterson. Uh, and Senator Frentz and uh, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I'd like to just quickly answer that question. The, the fees are set based on um, what the commissioner determines to be the, the gap in funding for the indemnity fund. So we have capped the indemnity fund at a maximum of $15 million. If it ever fell below those, uh, that fit, if it ever fell below $9 million, we would start collecting fees on that. And um, what we have said is that the commissioner will set those fees for an entire fiscal year licensing year. So from July 1 to June 30th, we would collect those fees. That's really dependent year on year on how much uh, that, that fund has in it and if it falls below that $9 million. We anticipate that there will be several years where we never have to collect fees, that that fund will sit fully funded, um, but but there will be other times where we will have to collect fees. And it's on every, it's a small percentage of every dollar of grain sold within the state. Last year we did, uh, we have reports that show that we did about $15 billion in grain sales in Minnesota in 2020. Senator Frentz, follow up. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I heard everything but the percentage on the sales. Is, I mean, do we have anything we can tell our farmers that mm -hmm. we're looking at, uh, Commissioner. Nathan, or Commissioner? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I think Mr. Milanowski can say that. And I just want to emphasize the last thing I want to do is put a, a fee on farmers. But I think that when we look at the production, the protection, uh, and but we've been looking at that because one of the first things I ask, okay, I'm going to sell. And I think he can say it's like, and, and again, these can be adjusted. You know, we can talk about this uh, as we're developing the program. We've been talking to uh, farm groups and others about this. But if I sell $10,000 worth of grain, it's going to cost. And I think Mr. Milanowski may have an example of that. Uh, Thank you. Share. Thank you, Tom. And uh, Senator Frentz and Proceed. Mr. Chair, the, uh, what we have said is that the commissioner is capped in that he can never set the fees above two tenths of 1% for every dollar. Um, but if we wanted to collect $10 million to fully fund it, if we have $5 million in appropriation and then wanted to bring it up to 15, based on that $15 billion in, of grain transacted, we expect that would be $7 for every 10,000 sold for uh, farmers in Minnesota or, or sellers of grain in Minnesota. Mr. Chair. Senator Frentz. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks, Nathan. I, I, I like the idea. I think I love the indemnity part of it. I just think it'll be easier if we get the information and the idea about that fee. And I heard two tenths of a percent, $7 per 10,000. I think more people should hear that. We'll be able to get more people behind this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Frentz, any follow up? Senator Goggin. I just had a question, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, regarding the uh, un uh, insolvent uh, grain 
crane buyers in the warehouses, what's been the average loss or from, from each one of those uh, insolvent businesses? Commissioner? Um, I don't know if Mr. Milanowski would be prepared to uh, answer that or not. It varies um, in, um, or if he could give an example of uh, some of the losses uh, in that. I absolutely can, Mr. Chair uh, and Senator Duggan. The, when we're talking about uh, these facilities that have failed over the last, say, five years, we've seen uh, very small facilities like that Carlstead Farmers Elevator up in Minnesota. Uh, fortunately, in that case, we were able to liquidate all the grain and make uh, all, all people who had sold grain on a, on a cash deal full, um, or, or make their, get them all the money that they were owed for those cash sales. Um, that is to say, though, that there is a lot of money that was unpaid there. We have a provision in our law that says that if you sell on a voluntary extension of credit contract, deferred payment, delayed pricing, something like that. It's not covered by the bond process. Um, to the root of your question, we have seen claims between one and a half million dollars all the way up to five and a half million dollars over the last five years. So um, there's a pretty big chunk uh, of money owed to sellers of grain that is, is lost um, through, through these insolvencies. Our bonds are capped at five hundred thousand dollars. So, um, you know what I just laid out there. Our, our bonds don't necessarily cover everything. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, the nine million dollars that would be in the fund would be uh, an adequate amount of money to uh, make each one of the farmers whole uh, in case of a loss. Is that correct? Yeah, and I can take that time. Uh, Mr. Chair and, and Senator Goggin, we anticipate that the average uh, amount of claims that we will see on this indemnity fund just based on the last five to six years of claims is roughly $1.5 million a year. So uh, if we were to build that fund to uh, the, the max $15 million, we would not have to collect until uh, I believe we have projected to fiscal year 26, uh, and then that that minimum value, that $9 million would then trigger us to, to have to start collecting there. Senator Goggin. Uh, no more questions, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Com or Commissioner, I do have a question on how would this work with the bonding? Would this be after the bonding's exhausted, then would this kick in? No, nope. uh, Nick couldn't. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So how we have it set up in the language currently is that the indemnity fund would take over. Bonding would only be required for select uh, entities. The language as it's written today says that a new facility or a new license holder would need to have a bond for the first three years. That bond, we would be able to use that to replenish the funds in the indemnity fund. We also would have the ability to require certain entities based on financial reporting to our office to secure additional bonds. And again, we would be able to go after those bonds to replenish the indemnity fund if we had to draw against that. Thank you. Members, other questions? I've got a couple of other questions I've for you. I've still got a couple more here too. Okay, go ahead, continue. Okay. And I just like on this too, I just, you know, emphasize similar to what North Dakota has. There's, they collect for a while, it collects, they blink off, they blink it on, very similar. I'll go real quick, five, next slide, uh, 500,000 to boost up our farm business management grants is something that this committee has funded for a long time. It's uh, incredibly important. We saw more farmers using FBM. It's a great management tool uh, within COVID. Again, something that we see quite a bit. The next slide is uh, $150,000 for sustainable uh, uh, packaging. There's been some changes in the federal law that's required our fruit and vegetable growers uh, to have some different type of packaging, and this would address uh, that need that uh, uh, would help them. The next slide is uh, $1 million for our noxious weed program. The committee is probably familiar with that you have funded 
for many years. We have just tremendous need in that. Noxious weeds to a uh, million dollars uh, has kept Palmer Amaranth, the work this committee's done, has saved millions for our farmers in not having to deal with Palmer Amaranth. We have seen more uh, Palmer Amaranth this session. A lot of it has to do with the drought because we see farmers getting seed screenings to feed uh, in other feed sources and bringing that Palmer into our state. And uh, so having that eradication and not having that get in our soybean fields and choke our combines is incredibly important. Uh, next slide is uh, uh, an additional $3 million for a Forever Green initiative. The committee has heard a lot about in past years to help boost uh, perennial living uh, covers uh, such as Kernza and uh, intermediate wheatgrass. Uh, the committee's pretty familiar with that. Uh, that continues the work that they're doing. The next slide is a, a, a piece of a healthy soil grant. Uh, soil health is a, a huge topic on the minds of all farmers. Uh, this goes well with a lot of initiatives that we have with our Ag Water Quality Certification Program. This is something a lot of the ag groups have talked to us about. It's something the chairman has brought up. We're looking at our Ag BMP loan program. This would be a grant program for equipment. This would be new. Uh, to help farmers buy uh, and look at different types of seeding uh, arrangements for cover crops uh, and uh, subscriptions for equipment technology and seed, uh, anything to help with uh, soil grants. Very excited about this, something that we've heard a lot from different groups. Uh, you can skip ahead a couple of slides here. We're almost done. I think I've got one more thing. Uh, uh, keep going. We're going to skip Bowser's part. We do have some butter neutral changes. Uh, I'm not going to go through all those. Uh, tech, mostly technical language uh, that uh, um, we also have in here. I'm going to skip that because they're they're basically technical. And then we would also just end. We do have one bonding request. I just wanted to mention in Senator um, Johnson's district. People may not know we have a big or a bigger office that serves the potato industry. Uh, that does uh, um, uh, different inspections, and we have uh, need 377,000 to improve that facility to serve our uh, potato uh, uh, business uh, uh, businesses in Minnesota. So that is my presentation, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad to stand for other questions. Yeah, it, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, that is my understanding. Uh, Mr. Chairman, without like, uh, I, don't, I don't have that like right in front of me. Like the drought relief, you know, for example, $10 million, that would be a new program. Uh, the they're big chunks like the drought the um, direct uh, the soil program again 12 million that would be a new program the meat processing uh, would be those would be newer programs although the grant program we kind of have that uh, already um, most of these would be newer uh, in shorter term uh, grant programs. Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, in looking at that, you know, and, and as we've been uh, working with this too and everything, um, let me just look at my notes here. Oh, uh, well, look, your local and regional development, uh, uh, your economic development councils, commissions, I think actually the one in your area probably is the leading uh, uh, piece that's working on this, that they are working, because that is the number one thing that they have heard in their area is, um, so they were working with the region, is it region nine yep. uh, in your area, um, uh, working with that. I think there's actually a grant 
uh, with some individuals to try to see, okay, how could we get and retain workers at these, uh, so it'd be like the economic Deve development councils like that. Mr. Huguenin too is also on the line and I don't know if he would like to add uh, to that too as well, if he's able. Did you say Mr. Mm -hmm. Huguenin? Mr. Huguenin? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair and, and members, ahead. unfortunately I did not hear the question. Um, I think, uh, Chair, I think you are on mute for the for the virtual. Yeah, I was asking what uh, economic development organizations would be eligible for the funds for the recruiting and retention. Mr. Chairman, members, yes, great question. And and what the commissioner said is absolutely right. We would focus on, you know, the organizations like Region Nine, Region Five, who already have um, SEDS plans that are are in place for rural economic development. So we would very much partner with them um, directly because they know their regions and they have those connections. Members, any other questions? Seeing none, uh, Commissioner, any final comments? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman and members, and uh, thanks for indulging me. We just kind of put this together. Well, the budget, or we didn't know we were going to do this today, but I really appreciate the opportunity from uh, the Chairman and Joel and uh, to share this with you. We're open to uh, visiting with you again. I look at this as a menu of things that we could do if we're going to do something I really appreciate the work that we did on the budget last year uh, If there are things that we can do uh, With the surplus uh, that are going to make some transformational and help secure our food system I, We appreciate the consideration I'm willing to work with all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you commissioner as always It's a pleasure to have you in front of the committee and we do appreciate what you do and uh, I'm certainly, these, certainly sure these proposals get plenty of discussion in the committee here and, uh, you know, by the end of May, I'm sure there will be some resolution on what's going to be done and how much is going to be spent. But uh, thank you very much. And members, uh, there is no other business to become before the, the Ag Committee will now adjourn. <laughs>